Sometimes in an editorial publication or other design, we want to have text wrap around photos or other elements such as shapes, infographics, um, illustrations, and so on. So for those instances, we want to use the text wrap tool in InDesign. Go ahead and open up the support file called textwrap.indd, and you'll see there's a photo here, uh, and then just some public domain text, and then a PSD placed over here, just with the basic, uh, I didn't remove all the background there, I'm just doing this for the example, um, but you can see that both of these images are covering up the text, right? So by default, if you placed in some text in InDesign and placed in a photo, uh, this photo is covering up this text because I placed the photo after I placed the text. Now I could go to Object, Arrange, Send it Back, and it would be behind the text. Object, Arrange, Bring to Front, it would be in, on top. Now how do I have it so it just wraps around it? Well obviously you could just bring the text box up like that, and then it wouldn't cover it up, and this would just jump to the next page like so. But another way is to add a text wrap. So with the photo here selected, so make sure just the photo selected, go to Window and then Text Wrap, and you'll see some options here. Uh, the first one is No Text Wrap. So if you ever have text being pushed off by a photo and you don't want text wrap, just select that first one there. That's No Text Wrap. The second one is Wrap Around the Bounding Box, so go ahead and click that, and you'll notice the type Now flows around this photo. But if we select this bounding box and make it larger, it will flow around the bounding box and not necessarily just the photo itself. So you can see there. If you select the third one, it's wrap around the actual object. So if I bring the bounding box up here like so, it doesn't affect that text wrap. It's only going to wrap around, as you can see, right there uh, wherever the photo is. All right, so if I move, let me use the arrow here. Um, if I move this around, it will wrap around the photo itself rather than just the bounding box. Now, regardless of whether you have the second or third one selected, we do have uh, this options right here where it says wrap to uh, right side, left side, both right and left side. So if you just choose one of them, you can see wrap to right side. Now if I move this over here, you'll see it wraps around the right hand side but it will not wrap around the left-hand side. So if you didn't want uh, any text on the left-hand side of it, you just want some white space over here over to the left, and you want it to flow on the right-hand side, then you would select right side, and you could also do left side. That's that second one. Now if you choose the third one, we also have where it says contour options, same as clipping, bounding box, detect edges. Let's go ahead and um, wh while you're looking at this, notice how it's flush with the edge of the photo, this text is. That's not a uh, good design. Uh, a, one design principle is proximity or spacing. We want at least one pike in between that photo and the text column. So what you can do is, whenever you have it here, right here, these are all linked together. Uh, if you press up, let's just do the second one for this example. All right, so if I select that, click this second one, and then you notice this chain link is checked and so now if I uh, make this larger it's going to push out so it gives a little bit of breathing room so now the text is not just right next to the photo as you can see there's a little bit of breathing room on all four sides if you want it just on top left or bottom or the right you can uncheck that and then just do e either side or top or bottom individually now what if you want something to just flow around something and just in a slightly different way and detect the edge of say a photo. So this is a PSD file. Uh, select that one and click this third one right there. And notice where it says same as clipping. Let's go ahead and select that and go to detect edges. And what that does is it detects the edge and now it's flowing around this. Now this is not good editorial design where we have uh, you know words just a little bit right there where you're, where you're jumping back and forth. So we would not want to do that, so you could adjust it. You can use um, different tools to manually adjust it. You can use the white arrow and click in here and actually uh, click and drag that out even if you wanted to. That's one way to do it. You know, if I just did something like that, now no text is going to be on that side, and now it's only on that side. So that's the direct selection tool 
uh, I just adjusted the edge there where it's detecting the edge automatically. And you can also do this with shapes. So let's just say we have a ellipse tool here. Click and hold onto the rectangle tool and click and drag it. If you want a perfect circle, just hold shift. And so we have a circle here. I'm going to add some color so you can see it. And then with this uh, circle here selected, click the second one and you'll notice it's it's wrapping around the bounding box, all right, not the actual object shape. So if you click the third one, now we'll wrap around just the shape. But notice it's flush with the shape there. So we can increase that right there, and it will give it a little bit of breathing room. All right. So in your designs, if you want to do something like that with text wrap, that can be pretty useful uh, as you flow text throughout a publication.